I'm sitting here in my office today, wondering how on earth an anime from the 90s could poison the minds of thousands of people, and how this is something I accidentally discovered. The information I am about to relay to you, well, I stumbled onto it unwittingly, but it's definitely wittingly now because I am as enamored by what I've uncovered as I am appalled. It's truly horrifying. And I can't look away. I've discovered a cult. And I'm risking everything. Everything. To put this out there. Because the people need to know. And if you never hear from me again, well, I'd better put the story out there before it's too late. Two years ago, I created this YouTube channel. I went into it knowing that I had the tools to. I love recommending things to people. I love cracking jokes. I have eclectic taste in media. I know how to edit. My equipment sounds good when I haven't just moved or temporarily lost my good mic. My interest in this channel now, however, waxes and wanes constantly. Mostly wanes. Making these videos is like having sex. There's initial attraction to the idea, a whole lot of build-up, a whole lot of work, but then I release the videos and... It's over. post nut clarity happens. Good night video, I have work in the morning, text me when you're home safe. They're out there and I don't need to watch them again. I actually think I've only rewatched one of my videos in its entirety once after releasing it because my parents wanted to watch my review of A Bronx Tale while I was visiting this one time. I knew that I wanted to work my way towards making movie reviews on an individual basis, but that didn't happen very often. And the reason for this is because movies get smashed with copyright red tape. This aggravation came to a head in my review of Gladiator, a review that I put a ridiculous amount of work into, just to have YouTube make me re-edit it somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 times. Just to tell me it couldn't be released over and over and over again. I eventually released it on Patreon for free, where no one knows it fucking exists. After that fiasco, I stopped caring about this channel. I'd pop in here and there to make a review that was easy to put together, like Strangers with Candy or Millionaire Dogs, but whatever. I had the channel for two years. I only had around 400 subscribers. I have other hobbies, I have a life, I have a job, and I have a podcast that was more fun anyway. And YouTube does not pay me for this aggravation. Then I discovered how to release shorts on YouTube. And everything changed. It took me forever to figure out how to release a video as a short because I edit and release videos on my desktop. You need to release the shorts on your phone. But once I figured that out, all I had to do was edit a short clip from one of the many real videos I made, send it to my phone, and release it from there. This was easy. It was not time consuming. And people ate them up. Some of my shorts would get thousands of views in the span of half a day or a couple hours or an hour. And I made them clickbaity by design. I don't want you to think that that part was by accident. But I didn't expect that many views. I didn't expect to get over 200 new subscribers in the span of three weeks. 400 subscribers in two years making videos that took actual work versus 200 subscribers in three weeks just clipping videos I'd already made. You know what I did next. I spammed these motherfucking shorts out the ass. I made a fuck ton of them. Some of them didn't get many views, but most of them got a stupid amount of views, at least compared to what most of my real videos had gotten. So then, when I made enough shorts, I honed in to see which shorts were consistently getting the most watches. It was the ones where I shit on Dragon Ball Z. A few years back, I released a video called Dragon Ball Z Sucks Dragon Balls, in which I spoke in detail about what a shitty, broken show DBZ actually was. Did I do this so people would lose their shit? Yes. But did I also genuinely believe every criticism I made? Yes. Dragon Ball Z does not make any goddamn sense in its own universe by its own rules that it sets. But the shorts I made from that video were consistently getting a crazy amount of views. So I doubled down on those in particular. What's more, they were getting some of the craziest, most bizarre comments I have ever read which made me double down even harder. This is the story of what I saw in those comments. 
Not just in the comments themselves, but in what was hiding behind them. If you ever want to see how frighteningly stupid some human beings can be, start a YouTube channel. And let me clarify, I love it when people comment on my videos, and most of those comments outside of the DBZ stuff I've made are coherent. I love it when you guys have something to say, whether you're agreeing with me or disagreeing. Now, if you don't like my videos because of some, like, dumb arbitrary reason, like you think I curse too much, that's stupid and you can grow the fuck up. But if it's something like, hey, you were wrong, A Quiet Place actually does make sense, and you explain how it makes sense, I can admit to myself that I might have missed something while watching it. But even in these videos, there will be a couple comments that are like, what the fuck are you talking about? But with every Dragon Ball Z related thing I've ever released, most of the comments are like that. Sometimes I get a solid wall of run-on sentence. Other times, I get a fucking novel with chapter breaks. I get people who just say shit like, keep your opinions to yourself, as if opinions aren't the point of YouTube. I get people who say shit like, I didn't watch cartoons growing up. On a video where I'm talking about a cartoon that I obviously grew up with because who the fuck gets into Dragon Ball as an adult? You'll have some people who don't realize there's a link at the bottom of the short to a much longer video. You'll have people who didn't even watch the short. Like, they'll write a response to the title of the video without even knowing what they're responding to. The amount of coping, projection, and willful ignorance exhibited in these comments is like a surreal nightmare. And I'd be lying if I didn't admit that I fucking love this shit. I'm obsessed with it. I get off to it. I have never in my life blindly wandered into a room full of people like this and created this much chaos. It's like poking a bear from a distance where he can't hurt you. It's like shouting fire in a crowded movie theater without getting arrested after. The reactions people had to these shorts was fucking insane. So I'm going to read some of these to you, including some of my responses, whether written down or just in my head. If you want to skip ahead and see the bigger picture that this all paints, go to this timestamp. But you are going to be missing some hilarious nonsense. He must be a guy that had no life. Poor guy didn't even have a TV growing up. At least I had the five channels. Well, okay, um, what the fuck are the five channels? And if I didn't have a TV growing up, how would I have watched Dragon Ball Z? Again. Nobody gets into DBZ as an adult. Oh god, I remember this fucking one. Jesus. The rules are for regulation reasons, and this is to prevent the Namekians from succumbing to the pitfalls of absolute power. If you set a rule like, only those pure of heart can make wishes, then the context is absolute. Pure good or pure evil. If you set the rule that villains can't make wishes, you invalidated your one... <laughs> one rule on the spot because someone will see themselves as the hero of their own life story and those against them as villains. The concept of unlimited wishes is moot because you could just wish for anything and if anyone can wish on them, you're looking at a trap of absolute power. The rules for the Dragon Balls that exist like limited wishes and the Namekian Balls allowing up to three wishes but they have to be made in the Namekian spoken languages to regulate the wishes made. Okay, so... How does only being able to wish for one thing regulate the wishes? You could still wish for... for evil. Supervillains wishing for immortality sounds like it would be a no-brainer to ban, but remember, you could be seen as a supervillain by the public, but you could perceive yourself as the greatest hero ever. So then why not just make a rule stating that nobody could wish for immortality? Like, this is still a thing you could use your brain for. Case in point of villains who thought themselves as heroes, Adolf Hitler, <laughs> Joseph Stalin, Fidel Castro, Mao Zedong, oh my god, Pol Pot, Benedict Arnold, John Wilkes Booth, each saw himself as this great hero when he was really a villain. The Dragon Balls have to take a neutral stance and you can require regulations for the balls to limit or even mitigate how the balls may be used. The rule of the Namekian dragons is that the dragon will only grant wishes made in the Namekian spoken language. This means you have to be of good standing with the, Namek with the Namekians in order to make your wishes. Going into some details on the historical examples, 
this guy, this guy now feels the need to give a history lesson, naming all the villains that he just named and like what they did and why they were evil. Bro, you're writing a comment in response to a Dragon Ball Z video. What are you doing? Yeah, Hitler thought he was doing what was best for Germany. Stalin thought he was creating a paradise for the Soviet the Soviet Union. Like, what are you fucking... You're commenting on a Dragon Ball Z short, you fucking psycho. Tyrants who create problems think they create a paradise when they create dystopia. They live in opulence while those beneath them live in poverty and oppression. Frieza was no different and thought he was a hero in his own story. Just like the examples I listed above. I, I don't think he actually thought that. I actually think Frieza, if you watch the show, Frieza kind of relished in being the villain. That was his character for sure. So I don't I don't think that's right. But the takeaway from this comment is that this guy compared a cartoon to real life like dictators. <laughs> that's how all storytelling works. All writers forget things they write and create inconsistencies. No, that's how all bad storytelling works. Imagine if every story ever written had the inconsistencies of Dragon Ball Z. Bro forgot you can't wish robots back to life. Somebody actually commented on this with some, like, actually with a brain, and wrote, You can wish an inanimate object from the complete other side of the universe, raise people from the de from death as an... Okay. From death as and grant power beyond what you can comprehend, but you think that it can't repair a robot? Somebody else wrote, yes, it honestly sounds like something the Wish the Dragon would say. The Wish Dragon would say, and uh, that, that's actually kind of true. Me responding to the original comment, it's incredible. Incredible that this clip is only 20 seconds long and you still couldn't pay attention long enough to know that I bring this up. Shenron can't remove parts of technology from 17 and 18 and can only remove a bomb. And now you expect the guy to rebuild a whole fucking android that is 100% mechanical? Yes. Yes, I do. You already said that he could remove the bombs from Android 17 and 18. Those were not their only mechanical parts. Also, we're talking about a dragon that can bring people back from the literal fucking dead. So if he can only bring their souls back from the dead, then how did he rebuild 17 and 18? He had to rebuild their robotic parts, right? You can't tell me there's not a way around this. I love this comment because even though it's just a guy saying I'm Batman, which has nothing to do with anything, it still makes more sense than most of the fucking comments I got on these. Maybe watch the show, then watch Super, then you might see some canonical things unless you're thinking of GT, but you said Z. Yeah, dude, I'm never watching Super. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, Goku likes strong women. Oh, God. Well, Goku likes strong Weemon. Chi-Chi is the strongest woman on Earth, so it makes sense. DBZ. 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 DBC. You're so... <laughs> How are you so stupid that your only comment was just going to be you chanting DBZ over and over again and you still misspelled one of them. They really cannot fucking read. This comment actually encapsulates everything I'm talking about in this video. Because Barak seen into the future before he died of Goku, Goku probably was seeing the future and decides not do do what he did, and well, he escapes Namek. To which I responded, I think I'm beginning to die of Goku. Guy responds, the show sometimes makes no sense, but I still watch it. I responded, that comment made no sense, but I still read it. This has 28 likes and probably 1,000 dislikes. I don't care. Sounds like you're mad it's better than you favorite shows. For real, you spitting. <laughs> Sissy got you back, bro. This was in response to the short I clipped when I talk about, uh... How the fight scenes are just two characters floating across from each other talking. And this one dude wrote, yes, yes it is. And that's why we love Dragon Ball. For real. <laughs> that's why you love Dragon Ball? Because it's boring? This comment, I'm not even going to read because it... Just try reading it. 
Just fucking try reading this. This is fucking gibberish. This person wrote gibberish. This is in response to uh, Goku died on Namek. How the show showed Goku dying on Namek and then in a later episode show him escaping in that space pod. Bruh, did you see his body or did you see his body get consumed by a flash of light? Because I don't remember seeing no dead body. He screams, knowing he's going to die, and then the planet explodes in a literal flash of light. That actually happened on the show. It shows that. His body gets consumed by a flash of light. It shows it on the fucking show. Though I do love the one guy who wrote, I could survive. Uh, kudos to you. Uh, do you know Goku moves hundreds of times faster than light, right? And the pods can travel faster than light, as well as maybe not as fast as Goku. What? But nonetheless, and that's where you chose to put your period. Yes, for a human to have escaped, that would have been impossible. But for someone who can travel across a planet a thousand times in a second or two, no problem. Like, I, I, I mean, if, I definitely missed that fucking part. Are they talking about instant transmission because he learned that after he escaped Namek? No, you probably just watched a different dub than I did, hence why most people use feats over statements. But if you need one, he provides a link. Here you can hear the narrator say with lightning fast speeds in another dub, he says with a blink of an eye. Now we don't know if he means the speed of which lightning travels. Okay, this guy's going into literal fucking mathematics. He's bringing up read... I'm not reading the rest of this comment, but like... He's bringing up like 30 to 40,000 kilometers. He's putting kilometers in seconds. He's putting physics in this comment. I don't care. But also, about watching a different dub... This is one of the reasons why nothing in Dragon Ball Z is canon. How many dubs of the show fucking exist? Oh, this one was great. This was from the same commenter uh, who wrote a very lengthy... Uh, this is also in regards to Goku dying on Namek. This one commenter wrote a fucking novel. Like, a, a novel. Many responses, many comments. But one of the things he wrote in one of his first comments was... Goku did die on Namek during his fight with Frieza, though. Go Frieza ended up getting Goku killed by an eruption of lava, and it was the wish made to bring back everyone killed by Frieza and his men that revived Goku. This is shown, as well as a clip not long after, of Gohan saying he can't feel his father's energy anymore. In another comment, the same fucking commenter wrote... Also, the only reason the dragon couldn't bring Goku back is because he was alive. Purunga can bring someone back as many times as needed, but Goku survived. The dragon itself states this. It's not because he died once already, it's because he is alive and survived the destruction of Namek. You literally just fucking wrote Goku did die on Namek during his fight with Frieza. What are you fucking talking about? You literally just wrote... What the fuck? This is double think. This is double think from 1984. This is literally double think in action. He must be that guy who didn't have cartoons. Yeah, that's why I'm reviewing a cartoon. This is about Android 16's death. His death was important, and bringing him back would be neglecting the release of his death? The release of his death. But that would require using your fucking brain, wouldn't it? To which I responded, here's a list of other characters in DBZ who had important deaths and came back to life. Goku, Piccolo, Vegeta, Krillin, Trunks, Tien, Yamcha, Chiaotzu. Yes, half those characters don't fucking matter in the halfway point of the series, but they did at the times they were killed. You know what else requires your brain? Using your fucking brain before you hit the fucking comment button. It's his story, he can do whatever he wants to. You can't be mad at him for doing whatever he wants to his story. He's the creator of Dragon Ball, he can do anything he wants to. Now, I don't know much about this anime, but he drew the thing, so he can do that if he want. If you want. Tails, is, Tails in an anime, draw it yourself like leave him alone, I bet he's more successful than you will ever be. Well, obviously he's making more money than you. Yeah, obviously. God forbid I want... A writer who created a show that made him rich to, you know, be a little consistent. I don't know, man. Toriyama rolling in that Dragon Ball cash. I think he can do whatever he wants with his franchise. Bro, he made the show. I love how people are, like, defending his bad writing by saying he's rich. Like, if you 
are rich off of something you wrote that was a hit that is like poorly written, I'm gonna be harder on you. Like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? You you made millions of dollars off of this. You better fucking write it well. You see, that is your opinion. If that's how you feel about it, just keep it to your damn self. Yeah, because that's what people do on YouTube. Just read this fucking sentence. If this sentence ran any longer, it could win a marathon. It does. It's mediocre, but it was good for its time. I think we can all agree it was mediocre. Did you even pay attention to the anime, or did you even watch it? Yes, that's why I made that video. This one was about Saiyans being able to breathe in space. How Frieza says they're not able to breathe in space, but there was a scene earlier in the show where Vegeta and Nappa are clearly outside their spaceship blowing that bug planet up. And this guy, there were people explaining the inconsistency with that, and this guy wrote, Okay, let me explain. They were still near the planet, so they were in its atmosphere. Not exactly oxygen, but the other aspects of space. What the fuck does that even mean? What are the other aspects of space? What is that? (laughs) What? Oh my god, this one was one of my favorites. I remember this fucking comment. He already had... You guys ready for this? This is about Vegeta and Nappa blowing the planet up. He already had oxygen in his lungs, hopped out of his ship, blew up the planet, and jumped back in. We've seen Saiyans hold their breath for long periods of time and breathe even in low oxygen environments, like the upper atmosphere. So it shouldn't be impossible for them to survive for short periods of time in space. I just love that this guy's coping mechanism for this inconsistency is that Vegeta and Nappa (laughs) took a deep breath before they left their spaceship and then hopped out and while still holding their breath, blew up the planet (laughs) and then hopped back in. (laughs) Like, what is this? How... How do you rearrange what you've seen in your head? This is that headcanon thing that I'm going to be talking about. Um, that DBZ fans filter a... They, like, filter information from what they're watching and sift it through, like, the the bullshit sifters in their brain until it comes out as the information they wanted to come out as. Bro stole the video from who? Myself? I made the fucking video. Just a rage bait video. Best just to not recommend channel. To which I responded, finally someone gets it. Don't pretend like you didn't have a bad take and and alienate 80% of the people who would watch this channel just based on your bad opinions. LMAO. Okay, well, the views and the subscribers proved otherwise. To which this guy, oh, uh, this pincher, I guess. He commented on a bunch of these. Someone gets it. Who are you fooling? So you don't like Dragon Ball. Sorry you don't appreciate the story, but there's no reason to rag on it, which is basically all you did here. Yes, there is. It got me views. Your whole argument comes down to it's bad and I don't like it and I think it doesn't deserve its acclaim. All your criticism proves is that you never bothered looking at the show anywhere beyond the surface level, which I did. I made an entire video about it. All this video has told me is that you know nothing about the series itself since you opted to look past its pros and say that there aren't enough to outweigh the flaws. Everyone is entitled to their opinions, it just so happens that yours is wrong. And the way you ended it was so condescending as well, like you were explaining something to a bunch of children when you're the one throwing insults the whole time. Um, If you guys have been paying attention to all the rest of the comments that I clipped for this video, you would know that these people are pretty much children. Like, (laughs) when you comment like children, I'm gonna treat you like children. Yeah, so that proves my point that everybody, all the hardcore DBZ fanboys are basically children. Somebody goes, somebody defends me, says he does have a point, and he writes, he's literally insulting in every breath. These are not criticisms, nor nor is calling it a poorly written show, he just happens to dislike the writing style, so he portrays it as terrible. Well, yeah, it's terrible because of the writing style. Again, he adds, what points did he make in this short exactly? Uh, saying it got popular because of luck isn't a point. So this guy goes on and on and on about how I didn't I didn't have any explanations to back up what I made in the short. And at some point I definitely managed and I think this this part was a response to uh this part was a response to me writing that there is a full video where I actually go in depth with everything. To which this guy wrote, If this short is any indication of the full length video, then there is no reason to watch as far as I can tell from the short alone. 
It's just going to be insult after insult and opinion after opinion. No hard criticism or commentary, just childish ramblings and unfunny jokes at the expense of a popular show. Okay, so then don't watch the full-length video, but then... So let me walk you through this. Guy complains that there's no real evidence backing up me shit-talking the short. Then when I mentioned to him that I made a whole video... He writes, oh, well, I'm not going to watch it because it's probably just like your short where you act like a child. Okay. This is probably rage bait, so don't comment. Thank you for commenting. I appreciate it. No, you don't. Your eye twitches when you lie. I disagree, but I hate how people are going after your criticism without watching the video. To which I responded, without even watching the short taken from the video. They just read the title. To which our boy Pincher writes, no, they listen to 30 seconds of nothing but insults and then they comment. To which I responded, yeah, they are commenting, aren't they? Don't mess with us, man. We can't read. Oh, I'm fully aware of that. Bros fave anime, def MHA, or some zesty shit. To which I responded, what's anime? Who made bros so mad? His landlord told him his overdue rent will get him kicked out by the end of the month. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm mad. Tell you didn't watch Dragon Ball without saying it. Again, I made a whole video about this. It is in the link of every short that I made from that video. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. After this outpouring of what I am forced to assume were grown adults defending a cartoon as if it was non-fiction, and believe me, we're gonna touch on that, I had to do some more digging. If you type Dragon Ball Z fandom is stupid or dumb or insane or a word that begins with R into YouTube, You will come across a few videos actually addressing how insane the fanboys of this show are. Turns out, I'm not the first person to see this. Trash Taste Highlights have a couple video clips where they legitimately touch on a lot of stuff I saw in those comments. Here's some of my faves. Dragon Ball Twitter is the fucking... I, every time I see <laughs> yeah. every time I see a shitty take... Starting off strong. Like, I, you just see the dumbest fucking take. It's always from a fucking Dragon Ball avatar. Yeah. Or, like, someone who, like, yeah. just tweets about Dragon Ball. Yeah. Because I, I remember seeing, like, so many shitty takes. Like, I remember seeing this one one tweet that was, like, talking about, like, how, like, Vegeta was, like, the greatest anti-hero ever written in anime or something like that. <laughs> my- Have you seen the tweet that was, like... <laughs> You know, Goku didn't protest, and it's like. <laughs> uh, did you do you remember when like Death Battle did Goku versus Superman? Oh my and god! And that got so toxic that they had to redo it to oh give the god. same results. I think that my parents didn't love me as much as the fans love Goku. I mean, okay, I love to cloud on Dragon Ball fans because they are like the brick wall of opinions. Exactly. It's like a fucking religion, you know. You, it you, is a religion. Yeah, it's like a cult. It's it, a cult. It's it's the cult of Dragon Ball. Oh wait, no, I never grew up on it. Oh, you did it? No, because I, I was always so fucking confused at what was happening. Oh, I, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, Wait, yeah. how were you confused? What, what was, what was when confusing when about it? When I was a kid, I would watch a fight, and then the next episode was them, like, talking. Yeah, we talked about it in a previous episode. It was completely out of order. I love Dragon Ball Z, but my God, I could not watch Dragon Ball Z today. No. It, no, it no, has no not way. aged well at all in no terms of, like, way. the pacing and everything. And I remember, like, trying to watch, like, the newest Dragon Balls, and... I can't even remember the fucking name. What's the new Dragon Ball? Super. Dragon Ball Super, that was it. And I remember trying to watch like an arc or two and it was just exactly the same (laughs) as Dragon Ball Z. It was like slightly faster paced. It was just cleaner line art, right? (laughs) It was just a thumbnail and it was like, what would happen? It was like, (laughs) what if Vegeta got uh, coronavirus, was tested coronavirus positive? And I was like, this can't be real. Like, it was just a thumbnail. So I, I searched it, and it was a two part series of what if Vegeta got the coronavirus? And I was like, what? What, what, was, the o- what was the other part? It was, it was, it was part two. It was part two. I didn't, yeah. I didn't watch it, but there was another one where it was like, what if Goku tested HIV positive? <laughs> and I was like, what is Dragon Ball YouTube? What is. There is another video by Saiyan Scholar entitled Dragon Ball Fans Can't Read. Which, aside from being a fact that I'm now way too aware of, is a mind-blowing expose on how DBZ fans cannot even understand basic questions with clearly defined, objectively correct answers about their own show. To write a question, a very simple question, with very simple answers, that requires the person voting on the poll to just read it, without assuming what's being said, to see if they're willing to take on board information being given to them. And I've done a number of these polls, and they progressively get worse. In Dragon Ball Z, which is the best transformation of Goku going Super Saiyan 3 in the anime, 
So the best Super Saiyan 3 anime transformation. Obviously, it's pretty simple. Super Saiyan Goku or Namek? Well, that's not Super Saiyan 3, so it cannot be the best out of these options. There's only one. Only one answer is correct. It's like being the last human left on Earth. You are the best by default because it's the only one. This is like showing someone a picture of a dolphin, a chimpanzee, a kangaroo, and a porcupine, and asking them which of these is the best dolphin. Your answer can't be an opinion. There's an objectively right answer. If your answer is wrong, you're unfixably stupid. Forever. But I wanted to find out more about what made these people tick. What makes them this way? So I went to the closest thing I could find to a source. I went to places like Reddit, Quora, and Kanzenshu.com, which is one of the largest Dragon Ball fan sites on the internet. These forums have some of the strangest topics I've ever seen. Like, yeah, you get the typical who would win in a fight type deal, but then you'll get weird ones. Like, here's one from Kanzenshu in which a guy asks the board to help him make counterpoints to a paper his friend gave him on why Dragon Ball Z sucks. Like, this person couldn't come up with counterpoints on his own, so he needed to turn to the message board for help? That's kinda sad. But, it gets worse. When left to their own devices, these people eat each other. Just look at this thread on Reddit called DBZ fans have explainism. After enough research, I discovered that there are certain traits that these people have that seem to be almost genetic. For example, fans seem to be obsessed with DBZ characters being able to beat up other characters. Characters from other shows. Like yes, Goku is strong. He's the strongest in the universe. The reason he's the strongest in the universe is because some guy who doesn't understand how to write a main character or a compelling story wrote him to be the strongest in the universe. That's the only reason. The writers of other stories are not concerned with whether or not their characters could beat Goku. They don't care about Goku. Goku is not their character. He's not even real. There's also the matter of headcanon. Headcanon is a weird thing that can apply to any work of fiction. Or, honestly, reality. But the on-paper definition of the term is something that a fan imagines about characters that doesn't appear in the actual story. Now, this is a normal thing for people who are fans of a franchise that's been around for a while. This kind of thing goes hand in hand with fan fiction. It's always been there. The problem though is that, as I've said before in my review of the show, nothing in Dragon Ball Z is canon. There are so many inconsistencies in this show that the stuff that's supposedly canon may as well not be canon. That's what happens in a show with poor storytelling, which DBZ is. When faced with this, do DBZ fanboys act like mature adults and admit to themselves, Hey, Dragon Ball Z wasn't really that good, it was just something I liked as a kid. No. Instead, they do something horrifying. They filter it through their headcanon until the plot holes, inconsistencies, and retcons make sense in their own heads. They take what is in the show, what is literally in the show right in front of them being absorbed by their brains and twist it into something they can make excuses for so that they can continue to mindlessly enjoy it without having to face the reality that DBZ was written by a guy who just forgot stuff. This is where things start getting dark. Because being able to rewrite reality in your brain is a thing that the mentally ill do. It's Doublethink from 1984, that method of believing in two opposing things that each negate each other at the same time. So now, at this point in the story, I was at the precipice of realizing that, well, Dragon Ball had spawned a cult. Now things have gotten insidious. There are brain-dead morons walking around in daily life. That's absolutely true. And these brain-dead morons can be fed lies directly to the face and they'll believe them. How do you think politicians get elected? But that's real-world propaganda, a thing that is spoon-fed to people subliminally over long periods of time. This is Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball isn't trying to convince you that it's not fake. This is a cartoon about dudes who can fly and shoot light at each other and blow up planets with their fingers. You'd need to be mentally deranged to think this is real. Oh my god. 
It all started to make sense. The coping, the willful ignorance, the spewing of the same phrases on repeat, the illiteracy, the defense of a thing that's poorly written and contradicts itself constantly, the defense of the person who created this universe, the god of Dragon Ball. The Dragon Ball fan community has become a cult of people who think that it's a true story. It's become a proto-religion. And you might be thinking, ain't no way. Well, maybe not on the surface. You ask the average Dragon Ball Z fan, is Goku real? They're gonna say no. But look what I found when I typed, is Dragon Ball real, into Google. And just read some of these answers. Read the amount of cope in these answers, even the ones saying it's not real. Yes, some people are just straight up saying, no, it's a cartoon, which is the only correct answer, by the way. That's like the dolphin thing. But we are now teetering dangerously close to Christian territory. And I'm aware that this is not the entire fan base. Matter of fact, a lot of what I said in this video about DBZ fanboys is not the entire fan base. But I think that even the ones who know it's not real, I think some of them wish that it was. Look at the way people defended Akira Toriyama in my comments section. He created it, he can do whatever he wants. And then when he does and it makes no sense, then the narrative changes to, oh wait, no, this does make sense. Look how I made sense of this. Akira Toriyama is without fallacy to these people. Akira Toriyama is their god. They interpret the details differently and break into denominations just like any other religion. Hell, even the original Dragon Ball is kinda like the Old Testament is to Christianity. Everyone just kind of ignores it. And the word canon comes from the word canonical, which is a word created by the church for the church. And I am not trying to get into a discussion about the validity of religion here. People can believe in whatever they want. But there is one big difference here between this and actual religions. Akira Toriyama is still alive, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't want any of this. Yes, I've talked shit on the guy for being a piss-poor storyteller, which he definitely is. But the fact that this man has at least admitted that the plot inconsistencies are just him forgetting stuff, or being overworked, or trying to have a life outside of some dumb manga that blew up and became more successful than he ever could have predicted, that's a pretty clear sign that he does not think he's God. This is exemplified in a Kanzenshu message board titled, Does Toriyama Give a Shit About Dragon Ball? I think the fact that this is even a thought in someone's head is pretty telling that this man got roped into something that became bigger than he anticipated, and now he's a slave to it. So Toriyama isn't even a cult leader of his own free will. The cult kidnapped him and put him in a cage. His followers are just writing their own religion at this point, is being kept alive for posterity. But then what of Dragon Ball Super? He chose to make that, he chose to feed the fans more of what they wanted. Well, of course he did. He created that to capitalize on DBZ nostalgia. Nostalgia makes people stupid, and Super just exists for the same reason that the live-action Disney remakes do. What's he gonna do, say no to a retirement pension? I don't blame him for making a new series. I'd do the same fucking thing if I had a cash cow like that. But when you're forced to do something like this instead of putting effort into something new because this is the only thing that the fans want, you may as well be writing it from a cage. Think of GT. Toriyama didn't write that one. He had retired from the Dragon Ball franchise finally, a thing I'm sure he wanted to do for years. But the fans weren't having it, and he probably wasn't selling anything GT related. So they roped him into making Super. You can't leave Profit. You must work wonders for them forever. So now I'm forced to ask one final question, and it's one that has an answer that's more obvious than you would think. Why Dragon Ball Z? 
Why this show? Why not any other anime or cartoon or whatever? And the answer is actually pretty logical when you think about it. We have to go back to what DBZ actually is at face value, minus the community, minus the legacy, minus all of that. For the long version of this explanation, you can just watch the video I actually made about the show. But here's the short version. Dragon Ball Z is just a dumb, shitty, poorly written show that makes no sense, but has lots of fighting, and was the first show of its kind to hit Western audiences, so that a whole generation of kids grew up with it. There is so much that is noticeably wrong in the writing of this show when you watch it as an adult, that your brain has to be stunted to truly enjoy it as a grown adult. And so it follows that the fanboys who are truly obsessed with this show as adults are dumb people who can't read or even write, who enjoy fighting and had an impression left on them by the show when it was still unique. Their brains are stunted. So instead of just having memories of enjoying it as a kid and then growing up and consuming better media, they just stayed attached to it and became a reflection of the show itself. It's really not that surprising that they're like this. The people who would love a show this stupid this much would be this stupid this much. Especially when you consider how many people did grow up with this show and how, when amplified over time, this can easily turn into an echo chamber. And it did. They all grew up to be as dumb as Goku and as arrogant as Vegeta. Thousands of them. And then they discovered the internet. One of my favorite reviewers on YouTube, YMS, aka Your Movie Sucks, once stated that he can't turn his brain off when watching something because his brain is the thing he's using to absorb what he's watching. This is one of the greatest quotes I've ever heard when it comes to trying to enjoy entertainment media. And it's lost on a lot of people. And this is a prime example of that. This show can only be fully enjoyed, fully appreciated, in its entirety, by the brainless. And it is the brainless who obsess over it and defend it. That's more or less it. That's the story of how. That's the story of why. Is it appalling that a cartoon warped an entire group of people's view of reality by accident? Yes. But it happened. That is real. So what can be done? Nothing. No one can save them. Go back and rewatch the part where I read the comments if you don't believe me. You can't change a person who doesn't want to be changed. All these people want to do is watch Dragon Ball Z over and over again. They want to watch Goku beat the bad guy. They want to watch Vegeta almost beat the bad guy and then get his ass handed to him. They don't want development. They don't want different. They don't want a story that makes sense. They just want characters who have been around forever to keep fighting forever. They're goldfish. Now, at the end of the day, who is this honestly hurting? Absolutely no one. So far, Akira Toriyama hasn't turned his followers into the next Jonestown or Manson family, which is great. He could literally ask them all to cave themselves tomorrow, and some of them definitely would. And then maybe he'd be free. But I think what made this a truly horrifying journey for me is that it's just one extreme example of a specific gathering of the sort of people that happen to live in society at large. Everything I've said about the DBZ fandom can be applied to other fandoms, sports, hobbies, politics, religions, etc. to some extent. And I mean, those last two are far worse places to find it than here. Maybe this is just where I happen to see it first to this degree. But Dragon Ball Z is still known to have one of the worst fandoms in pop culture, and that is something I discovered firsthand just by virtue of releasing some shorts dissing it. So even though you could apply it to other things, that doesn't erase the fact that this show did create a cult in which its members are incapable of enjoying other stories. That's as much a part of its legacy now as being the show that popularized anime in the West. Maybe that matters to you. Maybe it doesn't. But me? I just wanted to talk about it.
So now it's time to bring this back full circle. You may have noticed that although plenty of people in the comments section said things like, keep your opinion to yourself, or you're wrong, or you probably have so many dislikes, these shorts in particular not only got a lot of views for a small channel, but got me exponentially more subscribers since they were released. That means that for as many people that don't like my opinion on this, a lot of people still do. And that is completely lost on these people. And after everything I talked about, the Dragon Ball Z fanboys give me a bump every time I release a short about Dragon Ball Z. And that is completely lost on these people. And after everything I talked about, that should come as no surprise at all. These comments appealed to my chaotic side and actually reinvigorated my interest in the plebe. At least for now. I absolutely, positively, do not want to only do DBZ shit. I genuinely do not like Dragon Ball Z, and I think I've squeezed that original video dry. But, I now have a whole new video to clip shorts from. Those shorts will get bumped up by butthurt DBZ fanboys, this will get me new subscribers, and if the comments are as good as they were this time, I'll read them again. Wash, rinse, repeat. You could say that I'm just exploiting the stupid, but hey, so is this guy. At least I'm not trapped in a cage yet. You know the drill. Like and subscribe. I have a Patreon, it's only $1, and I may start releasing my movie reviews on there since YouTube has been a turd about those. Hope you enjoyed this weird-ass video I made. Oh, and by the way... Dragon Ball Z is still a bad show. Suck it.